Hello, and welcome to the Salt Stack booth at the Black Hat Conference. Uh, we're very excited to be able to present to you today in front of a lovely bookshelf. Now, I wanted to start today's presentations by talking about immutable infrastructure and talking about how immutable infrastructure still has different requirements when it comes to dealing with cybersecurity and how that landscape is beginning to change. Now, I want to begin by talking a little bit about the philosophy behind immutable infrastructure, but also just about philosophy in general. Usually when we look at a philosophy, an idea, a political ideology, they paint a very picturesque and rosy world, a world in which everything that we have that's a problem is going to magically melt away. But as we've learned over the years, the implementation of these philosophies almost always complicates new things, brings up new problems, and illustrates new challenges that we have to work through. This is no different for the philosophies around immutable infrastructure. Because what we're dealing with in immutable infrastructure is not only a change in how software is developed and put, but we're dealing with a fundamental change in how software infrastructure is managed, how teams communicate, and how people interoperate on a regular daily basis. And so what we run into is a challenge around understanding what this new landscape looks like, and also needing to ask questions about which aspects of immutable infrastructure philosophy are frankly, better than we expected, but also worse than we expected, and present new challenges and new problems. What I want to start with is talking about how cybersecurity often rears its head in an immutable infrastructure. We spend so much time about shifting that infrastructure to the left, shifting that infrastructure utilization over to development more DevSecOps, more implementation of security audits and scans in the container pipeline. But I want to talk a little bit also about what happens when we shift to the right. When we shift to the right of infrastructure, what we end up running into has more to do with dealing with new challenges that are emerging. The first I want to talk about is the fact that we now have a decay problem in infrastructure and in cybersecurity. The decay problem is something that's always been there. That is that the security of an infrastructure and deployment is constantly decaying. It's very second law of thermodynamics. Everything is always breaking down. If you were to go out and install an operating system from 10 years ago, say you install Red Hat Linux 5, what you're going to find out is that you can't even browse the internet because the security capabilities of that, uh, that operating system are so old that they're not even up to snuff to be able to open up a simple encrypted TLS connection to a website, let alone be able to adequately have everything that we need to develop and distribute world-class applications. Well, so you'll say that, Tom, we solved this problem with serverless infrastructure. We solve this problem with Kubernetes and immutable infrastructure because we're constantly deploying new containers. But is that really the case? It's become incredibly common that there are long-lived containers that are out in the wild. And I can't begin to tell you how often we run into infrastructures, especially when they start to get larger that have many containers that are unpatched for years and years, uh, not updated because when we create microservices, those microservices often are small services that don't need to be updated. When those services don't need to be updated, the result that we run into is that the entire stack that that microservice application lays on top of just persists. It stays inside of your Kubernetes deployments and as vulnerabilities are found and exposed, 
They just continue to carry on. And so we need to begin to look at what does the ongoing state of a immutable infrastructure look like? Because even though the, the infrastructure is immutable, the problem that we run into is that the world around the infrastructure simply is not immutable. It is constantly changing and those threats are constantly changing. So this is where we come back to needing to be able to actively scan not only the DevSecOps pipeline, we also need to begin to understand what are the threats that are still real. This is a conversation that I've had with many CISOs over the last few years. When they come back and they ask, I still need to know what's going on inside of these containerized environments. SaltStack has put a significant amount of energy into being, being able to scan not only, of course, classical infrastructure, virtual machines, clouds, and also being able to introspect into immutable infrastructure. We have to take the data from the real world that is constantly changing and overlay those data and that data and that scan directly into that infrastructure as it is being deployed. When that infrastructure is being deployed, what you end up needing to do is make sure that all of these new threats are being actively addressed and that we're extremely aware of the liabilities that are being derived from them. So as we move forward, there's one other aspect that I want to highlight quickly. And that is that one of the things that we went into with immutable infrastructure has more to do with the fact that we don't know how long these applications are out there. What we really want to do with SecOps and DevSecOps and DevOps and any time that we hyphenate a word with ops, is that it's not about building pipelines as its foundation. The foundation of these hyphenated concepts is all about communication, the exposure of the right information to the right teams so that they can make good decisions about how their infrastructure is built and how their infrastructure is deployed. When we are able to focus on delivering this type of communication, and that is really where we were able to create significantly better managed infrastructures through better managed communities. So to create this communication, we need to be able to take what happens in the right-hand sphere and make sure that that is visible all the way to the left. We need to be able to make sure that those pipelines are able to highlight that certain microservices, certain components, are not being updated, and that this information can flow back into that development pipeline. That those differences that we see in the ongoing flow and state of these infrastructures is abundantly apparent to the end users. And make sure that it's abundantly apparent to the development teams, the operations teams, and the security teams. This again allows us all to come back together and communicate on the same page about the big picture that we're doing instead of constantly being stuck in just chasing the next philosophy. Because we don't want to chase philosophies. We want to deploy applications, deploy applications that are secure and keep our businesses moving forward. That's the goal. The goal has nothing to do with the philosophy. It has everything to do with getting work done. Now, thank you for listening to this uh, brief presentation. We're going to come back every hour on the hour with some more of me blathering on about uh, something that you might find and hopefully find interesting. But enjoy the rest of Black Hat, and we will see you again at the top of the hour.